Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yemi of Ames Kofiud. We begin on Koftes Amad Beis, three lines from the bottom. We have a Ketana who was married, Midra Bonum. Then she grew up. Question was, do we say that her marriage automatically upgrades? Once she becomes a Gdola and mature-minded, she can just go back and confirm, acknowledge the condition that took place when she was a Ketana. So in this way, the marriage automatically gets upgraded and becomes a marriage which is min ha Or do we say, no, you need, you need to do something. It doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't just update by itself. Rather, you have to do a new Kedushin in order to acquire her anew after she becomes a Taylor. And that was Rav Shita. Says the Gemara, really? Vesava Rav. He ball in. If he was ball, he interacted with her as married. He made a new Kedushin after she became an adult, then we say the marriage gets upgraded, it becomes min ha but otherwise, loy, it does not happen by itself. Listen to this halacha. You have a ketana. Who is married to this fellow? So far, so good. No mion. And then she grew up. Now she married another fellow. What happens now? Does she need a get from husband number two? Or shall we say that she's already an anxious ish, in which case nobody can come and marry her? Machlek is Rava Mar, Eina Tzricha Get Mishen. There's no need for husband number two to issue a get. You know why? Because she's already married to who? To Reuben. What do you mean? She married him when she was young. Well, then she grew up, and that automatically becomes updated. She's now married to Minatera, which precludes any other stranger coming in and marrying her. She does need to get from Shimon, husband number two. Why? Because she was only married to Ruven Midrabana, and now she's a Gdoyla. Shimon comes along, is Mekadash, he gets her. So the Kash is according to, according to Rav. It would sound like it automatically, the condition with Ruven automatically updates and becomes a condition in the Suin Minatura. My love, perhaps, uh, we're assuming the lay ball. We're not speaking that Ruven did another condition, married her anew. Still, we see that his original marriage gets updated by itself. Why? No, the ball. He did do a new Bila, a new condition after she became an adult. Asks the Gemara, if so, we have another kasha. Either ball, my time with the Shmuel. So this fellow married her as a Ketana. Remarried her as a Gdola. How can another person come along and interfere? She's already a married woman. My time with the Shmuel. Why does Shmuel say that husband number two can come along and interfere and she will actually need a get from Shimon? Kasavar kolaboyel al das kedushim. Hari shayinim huboyel true. Ruven did another boil, another Kiddushin, but it was based on the previous Kiddushin when she was a Ketana. He's sort of just confirming. It's building on that previous relationship. Unless he specifically says, I'm remarrying her anew, Minat we assume it's just a, a continuation of what was there previously, which was only Midrampana. Rav disagrees. It's considered a, a marriage anew, which is considered Kedushin and Nesu and Minat Torah. So she's married to Ruven, Minat Torah. Ask the Gemara. But, you know, this, this Machlech is between Rav, who says, we treat it as a new experience, and Shmuel says it's just a continuation of the old one. This concept has already been discussed elsewhere. They argue about this elsewhere. The Yitmar, Kitsha al Ruven was Makadash Rachel. On condition that she has no nether, that she has no blemishes, the stam, and he marries her without stipulation. What happens now? Rav Amar Tzrichayimenu get. She needs a get, even though it turns out that she did not fulfill her conditions. She had a mum, she had a, a nether. She didn't fulfill the stipulation attributed to the kedushin, but 
keep in mind, when he married her, he ignored it. He, he never mentioned anything, and that's sort of a new experience. He was mavatal that all tonight. By the mere fact that he ignored it. We don't treat the Nisun as an automatic continuation, as well as just building on the Kiddushin with it tonight. No, there was a brand new experience here, which sort of ignores and negates and overrides the old one. There's no get needed in this case. She's not married. She fooled him. Why? Explains the Gemara. She needs a get. They give him the Naspa. Once he marries her without stipulation, it's as though he negated. He forgave the Tanai. It's a brand new experience. Unrelated to the Kedushin. There's no get needed. It's null and void. The fact that he interacts with her now, it's not a brand new relationship. It's built on the previous experience of the Kedushin, which had, which had a Tanai. So this Machlegis here is carbon copy of the discussion regarding the Ketan of the Gdala. He married her as a Ketan. She grew up. Do we say it's a brand new experience? Or do we say, well, it's just a continuation of the old one. Tzricha, both discussions have a lesson to them, and both are needed. And Rashi is gerus like this. If you take a look at the Bach, you'll see how he brings down Rashi's gerus. So let's go with the Bach. Di itmar baha. If we only speak about the Ketana, yeah, Bahaka Marav. Here Rav says that the interaction when she becomes a Gedoyla is a brand new thing, Mishum Delekatna. There was nothing discussed outright, like a, like a condition. So here we assume this interaction after she turns adult was meant for Kedushin, it was meant for marriage. So it's building, um, it's, it's upgrading. The relationship which was just with the Rabbanon up until this point. Avul Baha, but in the case where there was a Tanai by the Kiddushin, and he goes and he marries her, the Ika Tanai, maybe Rav would agree to Shmo that the assumption is that he's just going along with the previously stipulated Tanai. Why should we think otherwise? Vi Itman Bahi, if he only discussed that case, Bahi Kama Shmo would say, yeah, in that case Shmo says, that the marriage is building upon the condition which was with the Tanai. Why should we think otherwise? But in the case of the Ketano, turn the Gdala would say, well, you know, she was a Ketano until this point, and now he's marrying her. It's a brand new thing. Everybody knows that a Ketano can't really get married. So it's understood. It's self-understood. That when he lives with her after she turns Gdala, this is what he has in mind. He wants it to turn into a Kedusha Torah. Tzricha, no. The Kedusha is even there. We say that uh, it's just uh, a continuation of the previous experience, in which case it just remains as Kedusha in the Rabbana. Asks the Gemara, Umi Omar Rav, Ibal in Ibayaloi. Is it true that Rav holds that when Ektana marries, mid Rabbana, and then she turns to Dela, the only way it can get upgraded is if there is a new experience? Oh, we have a story. A story took place in the town of Norash. So Ruvain was Mekalish, Rachel as Ektana, Midrabon. Then she turned the dot. And they placed her on the chuppah on the way to marriage. Now the fellow came along. And grabbed her away from this fellow. So what happens? These two Chachamim, who were Tamide de Rav, they were there, Habu Hasam. When they said, no get is needed from husband number two. You know why? She belongs to husband number one. What do you mean? It was only the Rabbanon. Answer is, because once she turns like Dali, even if there is no further interaction between the two, automatically the marriage gets upgraded. I just thought Rav holds, you need a new mass, a new ball for that to happen. Amra Papa. <laughs> but Norash, in the town of Norash, they, th- they do things differently. Min sub nasibi. First, they, they marry. They interact as married. They do. And then they bring her into the chuppah. So, it was too late. This guy came along too late. She was already fully married to husband number one. Once they interacted, after she became a she becomes his wife, Minat 
So this is very much in accordance with Rav Shit. That's one pshat. Rav Ashi Omar, I'll give you another pshat. Who also shall like a This fellow grabbed her, acted grossly inappropriate. Likewise, gave him a piece of his cake. Had him taste a piece of his medicine. And they took away his kedushin. They will mafkir his kedushin. True, that strictly halachically speaking, the second fellow acquired this isha because husband number one was only married to Azaktana and that never got upgraded. But since he grabbed this other fellow's wife, we took it away from him and we brought him back to the first husband. Omali Ravino Ravashi. Tenach, that explains the Kaddish Pekaspa. If you used money for Kedushin, Chacham could say, you know, it's Hefker. Kaddish Bebiya, my, what if he was Makaddish through physical interaction? What are you going to do there? Answer is, Shavyu, Rabbanu, Libi, Lossi, Bilas, Nus. Chachamim deemed this interaction like Znus. They nullified its halachic value. In fact, Rashi says, whenever we are Makaddish and Isha, what do we say? Hareyat Mekodesh Asli, Kedas Moishavi So we are hinging, we are depending our Kedushin upon the approval and confirmation of Moshe Yisrael. And here, Moshe Yisrael are not agreeing with what you did. No Kedush. So bottom line is, if one is Mekadosh Ektana and she becomes a Gedola, Rav maintains the marriage does not automatically upgrade itself. You need to do something. You need to be boil after she becomes a Gedola and that does the trick. And this is in contrast with Rav Sheshis, who told us yesterday that it automatically upgrades. It's in contrast to Shmuel, who says that it's not a presumed assumption that you have that in mind. You have to actually have that in mind. I am being boil to make her my wife, the shame condition. Rav disagrees. He says it's just assumed, it's presumed. The Be'ila after Godless automatically turns her into your wife, Minatari. Amar Bidam or Shmuel. Back to the Mishnah, we had a story with a Ketana and a Gdug. Rabbi Leza says, look, we tell the Ketana, get out of the way, do Mion, and this allows this fellow to be Miyabim, her sister, the Gdug. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. V'chein Om Rabbi Lazar, Halacha, we follow the Tana, Ke Rabbi Eliezer. Continues the Mishnah. Reuben was married to Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah, who are unrelated to each other, and they're both Orphans, they're both minors. Basically, he was Mekadesh them only Midrabbanum. Umeis, and he passed away without any children. Shimon, the brother, is uh, waiting to do his mitzvah, Sibam. How does he approach these two Yevomis? His Bia or Yivam or Chalitza with either one of them. But there is Tsaras exempts her Tsari. See, the concept here is as follows. We have two Yevomis who are on the same playing field. They're both married with the Rabbanon or both married with the Torah. Then, by addressing one, you've addressed the other. Problem <laughs> starts when they're not on the same plane. Their marriages, their respective marriages, are of unequal value. Then we have a problem on our hands. How can we exempt one by doing even to the other, as we'll see in the Mishnah? So in this case, it's pretty clear. They're both on the same Level, they're both the Rabbonon, so addressing one takes care of the other one. You have two deaf mute women, both the same halacha, both the Rabbonons. What if he was married to a Ketana and a Chereshes? Oh. Each one has what the other one doesn't have. This one is sane and healthy, but a Ketana. This one is somewhat deficient, but a Gdoila. In this case, we don't allow one Bia to address the other. And Rashi says, we don't really know. Which one he prefers? Rashi is off to the right. Ketana v'chereshe says, Rashi lo yadinon b'hai nichalei. V'hai chashiva ishtei tfei. Although both are the Rabbanon, but in the Rabbanons we can speculate and sort of weigh the factors and say, look, maybe this is better than that one. This is the Iker wife that was the secondary. We don't know which one he really wants better and therefore we not sure which was the primary, which was the secondary and we can't exempt one by the other. And he has to address both. What about Pikachas? Vichay Reshes. He was married to an, a healthy woman. That's a marriage minatur. Vichay Reshes. On top of that, he had a deaf mute woman, which is the Rabbana. Bias ha Pikachas, Peteras ha The Yivam done to the P 
Pikachas, exempts the other one, because the Pikachas is his real wife. Ve'in bi'as ha'chem reshes, peteres ha'pikachas. But it doesn't work the other way around. The yivam to the chireshes, which is only a drabbonon type of experience, cannot exempt the healthy woman. The same thing with the gdailo k'tana. Be'as ha'gdailo, peteres ha'saktana. But, ve'in bi'as ha'gtana, peteres ha'gtana. Asks the Gemara. So you're telling me that if you left behind two Yivamis who are Cheroshois, you can do Bia or Chalitza to either one. A Cheroshes can experience Chalitza, she can't speak. The Cheroshes pass Chalitza, he vats none. Cheroshes Nechlats, the Yavam is a Cherosh. Or the Yavam of Cheroshes, Shechotza. Or he's a cotton, he can't be a cotton. It says, Kochi Yosalish, Rechlats is a cotton. Chalitza is a Pesula. How can a Cheroshes be involved in Chalitza? Omar of Gidom Rav, you write, Abia. Mishnah is not alluding to doing a chalitza with a cheresh, it's rather, it's the beer that we've done to either one which will exempt the other, but she cannot be involved in chalitza. Rava, or some agur is Rava, Omar, he has a big chedesh. Afilu teima chalitza. In Mishnah can be alluding to chalitza as well. What do you mean? She's a cheresh, the answer is. It depends what type of cheresh we're dealing with. What's wrong with a cheresh? You can't do a proper chalitza, right? But let's say she was not really fully married all along. Kan becheresh's mi kara. She was initially a cheresh's at the time of her, of her marriage with Ruvain, the fellow who passed away. In that case, the whole marriage, entire experience was only with the Rabbanon, and therefore we can even do a, uh, an incomplete, an, a less than perfect chalitza with her as well. Chalitza even without speaking, without expressing the psukim, etc. Kan becheresh's mi kara. So if she was all along the Chereshes, then we allow Chalitza in this case. Kan be'pikachas, v'achakach n'schashas. However, an Isha who was healthy upon marriage, and then she turned the Chereshes, then we're in trouble, because <laughs> the Yibam here is Minat Torah. She was properly married to him at some point. right? The initial point she was married to Minat Torah, and then she turned Chereshes. Now you have trouble, because you can't perform a proper Chalitza with this Isha. So the chiv has been a Torah, and you can't really address that chiv. So now you're in trouble. The Gemara explains, Chereshes me, Karev, she was a Chereshes all along, from day one, Ki di al, just as she entered the marriage, meaning it was a deficient uh, entry to begin with. It was only with the Rabbanon. Hachi nafa, likewise she will leave, meaning you can do this incomplete chalitza to address her needs, because her needs are deficient and, and, and lacking to begin with. As opposed to a pikachas, if she had married healthy, and then she became a chibreshes. Loi, there you can't do the chalitza. You know why? The ma'ak for bakriya, because the fact that she's unable to speak gets in the way. There's a big chiddush from Rabba. If the entire chiv is only with the Rabban, if she was a chibreshes from day one of that marriage, then you can perform this incomplete chalitza and address her needs. We're going to have a long string of kashas, on this chiddush. Number one, Eisvi Abai. Abai has a kasha as follows. The chiddush is mi korabas chalitza. He, do you maintain that a chiddush who is that way all along can have chalitza? But tonight, listen to this mission later on in the parak. Shnei achin. You have two brothers, Reuven and Shimon. Echad bikeach. One is healthy. Vechad chiddush. One is a chiddush. Nesu and l'shtei nachrias. Married to two women who are not related. Achas bikeachas. One healthy, one unhealthy. Ruvain, Cheresh, married to Rachel Echereshes. So that marriage is merely Midrabonon. Shimon Epikeach, married to Leah Epikachas. This is Midarais. Mez Cheresh Bal Cheresh. Ruvain, the husband of Rachel, passes away. Ma Yas Epikeach Bal Pikachas. What does Shimon do? Kainis. He can't do Chalitza. Because she's a Chereshes. The only option is Yibum. But once he does Yibum, keep in mind, you know, the Gemara says, Once you do Yibum, she's she's his wife, like a regular wife, and then he can just do Haitza, he can give her a get and send her out. But Chalitza is not an option. What about Meis Pikech Bal Pikachas? Shimon, 
husband of Leah passes away. What can Reuven do at this point? Koines, again, he cannot do Chalitza, he's a Cheresh. He can do Yibum, but he cannot get rid of her. He can't uh, ever, ever separate from her. You know why? Because at most he can give a get, which is incomplete. It's coming from a person who doesn't have proper Das. That's going to work with Rabbanon maybe, but he can't address this marriage which was introduced to him in Atoira. It came from a Yibum by way of his brother, the healthy brother who um, sent, sent his Yivama to him, that, that activated a Yivam in Atoira, so he can never get rid of her. Okay, bottom line is, it's clear in the Mishnah, you cannot do Chalitza to Chereshes. My love, presumably we're speaking by Chereshes, because she's a Cheresh all along. Uk Tani, the Mishnah still tells us, Kainis, in, you can only marry Chalitza, but not Chalitza. No, you know, Bik Pikachas, Valkachas, Charsha was speaking that she was a Pikachas at the initial point of her marriage, and then she turned Chereshes, so the Yibum here is triggered Minatur, you can't address it with Chalitza of a Chiresh, or a Chereshes. Toshmai comes another Kasha on Rabbah. Again, Rabbah tells us, if you are a Chereshes from day one, Basically, your chi of yibum only comes with the rabbanon. Then you can do a chalitza, even though you're lacking the ability to speak. Tashmai comes another raya, drawing from Mishnah Naf Kafir Beis. Shnei Yachin, you have two brothers, Pichin, both healthy. Nusun Shtei Nachru is married to two unrelated women. Achas Pichachas, one healthy. Vachas Chereshes, one is a Chereshes. Meis Pichach, Bala Chereshes. So Reuven the Pichach had been married to Rachel Chereshes. He passed away. What does Shimon do now? Koines, he can marry her. He can't do Chalitza because she's a Chereshes. There's going to be a Kasha and Rabba. Oh, so he can do Yibum. But once he's uh, done Yibum, he can, uh, if he decides he can separate from her, he can give her a gift. Suppose it's Shimon, the husband of the Pikachas, who passes away. What does Ruben, the healthy fellow, do? Oh, no problem. All options are open. He's a Pikach. The Yivama is healthy. Now, the Mishnah indicated that you cannot do Chalitza to Chereshes. Right, in the first case. My love. Apparently, Midahu Pikach, Mikara. The Mishnah there speaks about a Pikach who married. Mashman was speaking about a regular Pikach. He's a pikeach, the point of marriage. So let's assume that the other individuals described in this scenario are all matching cases. He, Nami, here, she as well. Uh, the, uh, the Isha, who's described as Chereshes, is speaking about something who was na- someone who's naturally so from day one. Chereshes Mikara, she was a Chereshes at the point of her marriage. And still, what does the Bryce say? Chalitza is not an option. Oktani Koinis, in. He can only do Yibam. Chalitz, like, we cannot do Chalitza to this Chereshes. What do you mean? She had married a Chereshes. She, she, was, she, she was a Chereshes when she, when she had married, when she got married. So, it's a Kasha and Ram. So, Gemara figured we match up all the cases, right? This has been there all along. That's been there all along. So, Gemara, no. How do you know? Meet the area. How can you prove one from the other? How could you say? How could you say? You know, each specific case is perhaps describing a slightly different variation here. So the Chirash is maybe speaking that she wasn't naturally so, she wasn't there. Um, the, 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 she wasn't a Chirash at the point of marriage. Maybe she married healthy and then she turned a Chirash and then you're in trouble. Because that marriage triggered a Yibam in and then the, uh, the Chalitza done to this Pikach turned Chirash is problematic. That's nothing to do with Rava. Ace, here comes another Kash. If two brothers, Reuben and Shimon, Echad be Keach, Vechad Cheresh, Reuben is a healthy fellow, Shimon is a Cheresh. This time they're not married to strangers. They're married to two sisters, who are as follows Achas be Kachas, one healthy, Vachas Cheresh, and one is a Cheresh. So let's go with Reuben the Cheresh, married to Rachel a Cheresh, Shimon the Pikeach, married to Leah the Pikachas. Meis Cheresh Bal Cheresh. Reuven, who is a Cheresh, husband of Rachel the Cheresh, passes away with no children. Ma Yase Pikach Bal Pikachas. What does Shimon, the Pikach, husband of Pikachas, do with Rachel, who is a Cheresh? Well, this is pretty simple. You see, he's married to Leah with a proper, solidified marriage, Minat Torah. So now Rachel, who is a sister, 
who's really only coming on account of her flimsy marriage to Ruvain. She was only a Cheresh's with Rabbanon. So then, Isha, she leaves this scene. She's a sister of my wife. Okay, fairly simple. What about Meis Pekech Bal Pekachas? Shimon, the healthy fellow, husband of Leah Healthy, who are involved in a marriage with Atonah, he passes away. Now, she's a Yevama presenting to Ruvain, who happens to be married to her sister Rachel, but only in the Sund Rabbanon, which is inferior relative to her Chi of Yivim and Atonah. What does Reuben do now? He's in trouble. He has to issue a get to his own wife, who's now us him because she's a sister of, of the Yavama here. The Yavama is sort of hovering over her, uh, overriding her marriage to Reuben because this Yibam is Menatera, whereas the marriage between Reuben and Rachel is Melamid Rabbanon. So, get to Rachel, that's number one. And. Uh, Reuben can't uh, really do Yibam to, to Leah because now she's a sister of his uh, of his wife, the Gerusha. Okay, so bottom line is, it's clear. Oh, let's see. V'chit now. What are we speaking about? The, these conditions described here, Cherush and Pekeach, did they... Develop or were they there from day one? Oh, Bechite Mechinami Bepikeach Vachakach Nisharish If if we'll uh, suggest, let's suggest that you know the Pekech that we're speaking about. In the most recent case, right, we're speaking about a Cherish who is now in trouble, right? The um, the Pikeach, who was married to the Pikachas, he passed away. The Pikachas, who's a Yivam and Torah, came and met the brother who's a Cherish. He's in trouble, as we explained, because she interferes with his marriage. He has to give her a get. His own wife he has to give a get, and he can't really do much to the to the Yivama because she's a sister of his of his um, of his wife now firstly it's mashma that he can't really even do a chalitza okay but what are we what are we speaking about what are we speaking about we're speaking about a fellow who was actually healthy way back when and then he became a cherish so this Cherish, husband of Cherishes, was actually a pikeach at the initiation of his marriage. Right? And then he turned a Cherish. Is that, is that what we're speaking about? The things changed somewhat in the middle? That doesn't work. Because you're telling him to give his wife a get. He cannot give his wife a get. If he had married her healthy and then he turned into a Cherish. How can the Mishnah say that he issues a get to his wife? He can't do that. But now the Mishnah says, look, Nizharsho. Suppose he married, um, a person marries an Isha, both healthy, and then she becomes becomes a Chereshus. So she's lacking in Das. You might say, you can give her a get. The fact is, you know, as Rashi explains, you never need the Das of the Isha. A get works uh, against her will. You don't need her consent, you don't need her Das. Just give her a get, and that works. Let's say she becomes deranged. She's a shaita. Oh, that's different. Lo yaitzi, don't give her a get. Chacham umochoshesh that uh, people will take advantage of her. Don't just send her out and and and, and make her hefker. Okay. Now nescharish who anishtata. Let's say husband becomes a cherish somewhere in the middle of the marriage or becomes a shaita. Lo yaitzi elamis. Get is no longer an option. You know why? Because in Rashi's words, the Kiddushav Hayu Kiddushin Gemur. The marriage was proper. The Kirushin Vilay Das. But now the Gerushin is without proper Das. He established a marriage which was solid, solid footing. And now he's unable to really address that marriage and terminate it. He's a Shaito, a Cherish. So when the Mishnah suggests that he 
that the Cherish, the husband of the Cherishes, will give his wife a get because the Yivam is interfering with their marriage. Evidently, we're not speaking about a fellow who turned Cherish later on, you know, during his marriage. That wouldn't work. Oh, apparently we're speaking that he was a Cherish from day one. The entire marriage with her was only with the Rabbana. So he can give her a, he can give her a, a get later on. Okay, once we establish that, if he's a cherish miyikara, we'll assume, right? That one's matching. He nami cherishes miyikara. His wife as well was a cherishes from day one. Okay, having established that, umeda chaya is cherishes miyikara. If this mishnah discussing the two sisters, the most recent mishnah, is alluding to people who are cherishes all along. Well, let's assume Nachriya is Nami, the previous Mishnah discussing two unrelated women, is also speaking about a matching circumstance. Cheresh's Mikara. Cheresh's there are describing women who are Cheresh's from day one. Utnan Gabi Nachriya's. And what does the Mishnah there say? Kainis. In Chaylit Slay. Fellows faced with a Yivama or Cheresh's. Kainis in. Yivam is an option. Chaylit Slay ben Atchalitza. So sort of we built ourselves up here. We brought a right from one mission and to the next. And we worked out all the uh, cases to the point that we've proven that we're speaking about Khershim from day one of marriage. And still, we don't allow Khalitza. That's a Kasha Rabbo who says, well, if you married as a Khersh, then your entire marriage is just a Rabbanan and we can, we can uh, afford, we can suffice with a Khalitza which is uh, you know, deficient. Takasha Rabba. Ishtik. So indeed, Rabba was silenced. Ki also commander Rav Yosef, and Abayi who presented all these kashas came to his rabbi Rav Yosef. Amalei Rav Yosef says, I had a better idea for you. My time my toisve miha. Why did you choose to ask him from these missions? The yachal ishnui loch. If I were Rabba, I would have just answered you. Achayis cherishes mi kara. Don't connect the missions. True. In the most recent mission of the sisters, we're speaking about they are cheroshes from day one, but nachrias in the earlier mission of pikchos vachas Perhaps it's a slightly different variation. We're speaking about cheroshes, we're not that way all along. So, isn't really a kash on on Rabba? Rather, you should have picked a better kash. Ali boilach li suve mahar. Should have asked from the following mission, which says shnei achen cheroshes. You have Reuben and Shimon brothers who are cheroshes. Nesun shteachoyes pichos, who are married to two sisters, who are both healthy. So basically, all these cases that will be presented in this Mishnah are speaking about marriages which are only marriages with Rabbanan. For one reason or, the, or, the, or, or another, meaning either both men are cheration or both women, and we're going to mix and match all types of variations, but the bottom line is, all these marriages are only Kedusha mit Rabbanan. They're somewhat deficient for whatever reason. So let's see. Shnei achen cherishin. You have Reuven and Shimon brothers who are both cherishin. There you go. That's sufficient reason to deem their marriages only mit Rabbanim. Irrespective of who they're married to, right? Nusu and Shteichoy is Pikchoy is married to two healthy sisters. Or Shteichoy is Cherish is two unhealthy sisters. Or Shteichoy is two sisters, one and one. Achas Pikachas, Bachas Cherish is one healthy, one unhealthy. So in all these cases, we're speaking about Nusu and Rabbanim, right? Or you have the flip case. You have two sisters who are both unhealthy. There you go. So at most, it will be a Nesun Draban, irrespective of their husband's condition, right? So they're married to Nesu, it's a Shnei Achen, Pichen married to two brothers who are healthy. Or the Shnei Achen Cherish and two unhealthy brothers. Or the Shnei Achen Echad Kech, Vechad Cherish, two brothers, one healthy, one unhealthy. In all these cases, Haregel Petrois, Petrois, Menachalitzim, Nayibum. There is no Chalitza, there is no Yibum. Why? Why not? Very simple. Because she is the Achois of Maisha. No matter who dies here, see, both women are on the same uh, plane. Their marriages are of the same exact value, both men are abundant. So one pushes aside the other upon being presented with a Yibum situation. Achois Yishtai, right? 
But let's say they were not related, not sisters, then Yichmaisu. Then if they present themselves to the brother as Yivama, sure, they can do Yivam. And then, once they're married, they can just divorce if they choose to do so. So bottom line is, this brother, this, this Yavam, who happens to be a Cheresh, he, he can do Yivam and then follow with a get. Hey, Chidami, now, what is the circumstance? What, what exactly are we speaking about? What happened? Ilayim of a Pikchim. Ulba Seifnis Charshu. So his brother who passed away, who sent him this Yivam. In what state was he? In what condition was he when he married this Isha? Are we speaking that they were healthy? The brother was perfectly fine and then became a Cherish? So the marriage was Minat Torah. And the Chi of Yivam is Minat Torah. Yivam presenting to this Cherish needs Yivam Minat Torah. And now he does Yivam. And then he can follow with a get. Really? Mimatsi Mabki. This type of case. How can the Cherish do a get? But now, the status of Yitzi, Nisha is a shy to don't do a get, or afraid about inappropriate behavior. This charishu, or the status of Yitzi alumnus. Likewise, if the husband turned the cherish or a shy to after marriage, since the marriage was menatera, and now he's a cherish, he can't address that marriage. He can't undo and terminate that marriage. In this condition, in this state, here as well. If his brother was a healthy fellow upon marriage. And then became a Cherish. Now he passed away. His Yivama is Yivama in It's based on a Torah marriage. She's presenting to this Cherish, who's doing Yivam, who's being Mekayim, he's fulfilling Yivam in Torah. She's his, mar- his married wife in Torah. How can he undo that with a get coming from himself as a Cherish? Huh, that doesn't work. El Alav, apparently was speaking, a Cherish in Mekara. That the Khershin discussed in this Mishnah was that way from day one. So his brother married her as a Khirish. A Khirish who marries, it's only Midrabban. So when he passed away without children, the Ivama comes to the next brother, the Khirish. He does Ivam, but it's only addressing a Khiv Midrabban. So now he can terminate terminate that with a get, even though he's a Khirish. So once we know that. Let's draw a parallel. Let's assume that the case is in the Mishnah uniform. I mean, the hein The men are cherish from day one. In Unami, cherishes mikara. The women as well. The women described in this Mishnah, the chayre shois, have also been that way since day one. And what does the Mishnah say? Chalitza is not an option. That's a kasha rabba. Uktani. The Mishnah says, "Amayu nachriyis yichnois." If Rach and Leah were not sisters, so then when Shimon is presented with uh, Rachel, his uh, brother's former wife, he can do a uh, Yibam. Right? Yichnoisu. They can take them in. But no Chalitza. Yichnoisu in. Ya Chalitza lo, you can't do Chalitza. What do you mean? She married as a Chereshes, which is only with the Rabbanu. Why can't I do this deficient Chalitza? Fine, she can't speak. Who cares? Do you have to the Rabba? Do you have to indeed? This is a refutation on Rabba. Apparently, you know what, Chachamim didn't modify the Chalitza in accordance with our needs. There's one way to do Chalitza. You have to be fit, you have to be roy to speak and to dictate and to declare. Otherwise, it's not a Chalitza. Irrespective of the fact that the entire need for Chalitza in this case is only the Rabbanon, we don't give you any discounts. Mish spoke about a fellow being married to Aktana Vechir And then he passed away. You can't address one and exempt the other one, because each one has her own unique status. Omar Rav Nachman. Says Rav Nachman, Ashkachti. I once noticed that Rav Adabar Ava, so him, with Rav Chana, Chasti, and Rav Chana, his son-in-law, they asked me, they were sitting, where were they sitting? In the street, in the marketplace. Because Makvu, Akvasa, they were gathering Talmidim around them. Bishukah the Pumbadisa, right in the marketplace of Pumbadisa. Rashi's first, first shot is, Makilim Talmidim, Rashi around the left. Makilim Talmidim Sviyam Shayibayim Lashmai Devrayim. Suddenly everybody's gathering to listen to their wonderful, beautiful words of Torah. Lishnachrin, another shot is, 
the Maku Akhosam Meshivin Kushi they were debating words of Torah, and perhaps that attracted the crowds. He created an environment, a culture of learning, right? And like shook. Suddenly everyone's attracted like a magnet. What were they speaking about? The Amri, and they discussed this very mission. Ha this nan ktana vichereshis. The Mishnah says these two women, the Ktana and the Khereshis, Ain Bias, Achas Men Pater Sarasa. Addressing one doesn't address the other. Because we're not, we're not really sure as to whom he prefers. Ha ni mila it only applies the nafale ma'achef pikeh. If the fellow passed away, leaving behind the ktana vichereshis, was a healthy fellow. Because then we're not really sure which one is the Iker wife. The both the Rabban, but which one's primary? We don't know even Ktana Nikhali, whether he prefers the Ktana, even Khereshis Nikhali, or the Khereshis. Why? Each one has an advantage over the other. Even Ktana Nikhali, perhaps he prefers the Ktana, the Asl Khaldeh, because eventually she'll you know, grow up and become mature minded, and that's what he has in mind. As opposed to the Khereshis, who, um, who uh, in all likelihood remains that way for all time. So that perhaps gives a, an advantage to the Ktana. Or. Perhaps he prefers the Chereshes, because after all, she's his age, she's mature, the G'dayli, she has Bia, she can have kids, Avo, no. so that's when he was healthy. We don't know which one he prefers. But in the following case, if they were both married to a Chereshes, we know who he likes. Of course he likes the Chereshes, the Bas Biyahi, U Bas Minayi, she's his type. Of course, Chereshes is number one. And by doing Gibam to Chereshes, you've exempted the Ktana who is sort of secondary, second place. So that's what they were saying. Who's speaking? Rav Nachman, right? But Amin al Rav Nachman says, I responded to them, I disagreed. I feel enough like Mach of Chereshes. Even if they should be coming to him from a brother who's a Chereshes, Nami Mesapkele, we're still not sure which one is on top, which one is secondary. Now, Ketzat HaKanosa. How do we address this case? We have a Ktana, a Chereshes, both Yivamis. What do we do? Says the Gemara like this. Amrav Chiz the Amrav. So Rav tells us as follows. Koinis HaChereshes. It's a two-phase process. First, he does Yivam to the Chereshes. Once he's married, Umoitziya Beget, he can give her a get. So that's how he addresses the Ktana. Uktana Tamten Achetag Devotachlitz. Then he waits for the Ktana to grow up. And she's Roy for Chalitza, and he does Chalitza. That's why he dresses both women. And now she explains, uh, he can't just do, um, give them to the Chereshes and hold on to her, because then, and because then when he does Chalitza to it, it makes it lo yivne on the bias, you're negating the bias, and it makes the Chereshes also to him. It's complicated because they're both, they're both deficient marriages. You don't really know which one is the actual. So you have to address each one separately, as we explained. Omrav Chizah Shema Minokus of Rav. From this halach of Rav, we can derive as to the true um, um, understanding of the marriage of Ektana and Echereshes. They're both with the Rabban, but still, listen to this. Rav holds Echereshes is Knuyo Mishayaris. The marriage with Echereshes is an incomplete marriage. She's not really a Bardas. Rabban will massacre in marriage, but it's it's sort of a 50% marriage. That's the Echereshes. Ketana, on the other hand, the marriage to Ketana is a different type of thing, a different product. Knuyo Vena Knuyo. Over there, it's either all or nothing. <laughs> There's one aspect of Kenyan and one aspect of no Kenyan. What does this mean? Rav Hashem explain. Sure, Rabban will massacre in marriage, but you never know how it's going to unfold, how it's going to develop. She might just walk away from him. She might do Mian. So it's sort of a, a pending marriage, either on or off. But by Cheresh, it's different. It's a marriage. There's nothing pending about it. There's nothing unsure about it. But it's a deficient marriage. It's a complete marriage. So having said this, we understand the basis for Rav's solution. Rav tells us that you do Chalitza to the um, Katana after she grows up, but only after you did the Yibam to the Yichereshes and divorced her. How does that 
formula lead us to, to this understanding and this perspective in the, into the marriages of the Iktana Vecheresh. It explains the Gemara. Because if it were so that the Cheresh's marriage is either on or off, either yes or no, and the Iktana is Knuyo Mishiras, the marriage of the Iktana is considered a deficient, incomplete marriage, if it's the other way around, then I have a kash. Cheresh's are my kindness, or Matthias Baget. Why does Rav say, I marry the Cheresh's, I do Yibam, then I give her a get? Unnecessary. Taysiv gabe mimonavshach. Marry the chereshes and hold on to her. Mimonavshach. You know why? Either all or nothing. Ik nuyahi. If this, if this marriage with the chereshes works hundred percent, how knuyahi? Okay. So then uh, I did a kinyan in the household. I did ibum. And. Uh, that's it. It's over. Yibam is, is done on the household. Chereshes was her proper wife. I did a proper Yibam and it's done. Vilav Knuyi on the other side of the coin if the marriage with Chereshes is worthless, right? We say it's either all or nothing. So then no harm was done. You're perfectly safe once again. You know why? Hanachris <laughs> Baalmi. And she was never married to my brother either. She's a perfect stranger. And then when I do Chalitza to the other Isha, to the Tzara, the Ketana, it has no effect on her. They were never together in the same household. She's a total stranger. She was never married to my brother together with that Ketana. So apparently this is not Rav's approach. Rather, it's the other way around. And the Sun of the Ketana is... Either 100% or nothing. And the Chiresh is sort of 50%. So now I can't do the solution. If I marry the Chiresh, which is only a Miktas, Kinyan, and then I do Chalitza to Tana, that Chalitza will sort of interfere. Because I did a, a Loi Yivna, I sort of pushed away the household. Because maybe the, the Tana's marriage is a 100% marriage. And that's superior to the Chereshes, which is only 50%. So that's why Rav says, do Yibim to the Chereshes, address her needs, do get, and then do Chalitza to the Ketana. So each one is addressed separately. Asks the Gemara, one second, if that's the case, as you said that the Chereshes is 50%, the Ketana is either 100 or 0, Ketana my Tamtana should tag the Vatachlet. So why does Rav say, Ketana has to wait until she becomes a Gdaila, and then you do Chalitza. Tesev Gabe. Why don't you just marry the Ketana and stick with her? If it's a 100% proper Kenyan, so you did a Yibu. Ilav Knuyahi. On the other hand, if the Ketana was not acquired, it's not a proper Kenyan, relative to the Chiresh, as we say it's zero, Nechrei Sebaomi. So then she was never married to his brother either. She's nothing. She's taking a stranger into your house. Says the woman, one second, but then you're going to run into trouble with the Chereshes. How are you going to address the Chereshes? The Chereshes can't have Chalitza. Right? That's not an option, as we concluded before. And you can't do Yibam to the Chereshes now either. Because... According to this way of thinking, the Ketana might be 100% Kenyan, which is superior re- relative to the Chereshes, which is only a 50% Kenyan. So you can't be having the Chereshes. Once you did Yivam to the Ketana, you've already addressed the household. You can't be Yivam to Yivam. The only solution is, as Rav tells us, since the Chereshes is a 50% type of wife, and the Ketana is either 100% or nothing, it's a suffix, first go to the Chereshes. Do your yibam, right? Chalitz is not an option. Do your yibam. Address her needs. Do a get, get rid of her. And then go over to the Ketana and do Chalitza with the Ketana. This way you address both Nashim. If she's nothing, then you don't need anything. If she's a real Isha, you took care of her by way of Chalitza. Okay, so what do we learn today? 
one marries a Ktana, and then she grows up. And then he redoes the, uh, the Bia with her. Rav says, perfect, now she's married Minatir. Shmuel says, one second, unless you stipulate, unless you ex- express that you're doing a new condition, it's not assumed. Why? Kol boil Adas, condition Harishayinu boil. It's presumed to be just a continuation and building on the previous relationship, which was merely with Rabban. Here the same Achayikus Ruga. I need to now explain why both are needed. Gomer concludes, Achay Reshes cannot experience Chalitza. In contrast with, to Rabba's Chiddush, we conclude no. Even a Chereshes Mikara, she was always a Chereshes. She married the Chereshes, which is only with the Rabbanon. You cannot do a deficient Chalitza. There's only one way to do Chalitza with people who can speak. A fellow passed away, leaving behind a Chereshes and a Ketana. They're not pointing to each other. We don't know which one's the Iker wife. What do you, yes, do? So Rav, and the way the Mur explains, Rav holds that a Chereshes is a Kenyan Meshuyer, a Ketana is a Safa Kenyan, either completely or nothing. And therefore you do Yibum to the Chereshes, you Megarashur, wait for the Ketana to grow up, and then you Chalitza. Then you have properly addressed the needs of both Yivamis. All the best to you, and much